Thank you for tuning in to CCF Lowell's podcast. Wherever you are, we pray that you would be encouraged by today's message. To learn more about us, please visit www.ccflowell.org. And you can also find us on YouTube and Facebook. As Pastor Jane already mentioned, we're starting a new series. And last series was awesome. And this coming month, we want to talk about the Father. Who is God? Why is he called a Father? What does fathers do? We think we know, but we don't. <laughs> because he's a Father. Hallelujah. So we're going to learn a lot about the Father. You don't want to miss any of these uh, series. You start today, next two weeks, the third week afterwards, you will hear about the Father. Hallelujah. Because he's a good God. Can you go to the second slide? Uh-huh. This one. So today we look at the Father's love, and I'm just going to talk about a little bit about his love because we cannot cover his love. We can't. And then the next week, the subsequent weeks, I believe you see what is there. The provider, he will discipline you <laughs> because he loves you. And we'll talk about his unchanging love. Amen. You know, when we, talk, when we hear about Father, 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 what is that? Is it because I gave birth? That's why I'm called a father? What is father? And a lot of us have seen different examples of fatherhood. And so we think that is the way fatherhood is supposed to be like. We're wrong. Maybe you are here. You have been loved by a father. And so you understand the relationship between a daughter and a father, a son and a father. Maybe you are also here. You have been hurt. By a father. You've been hurt. Even in the Christendom, those who claim to be your spiritual fathers. You've been abused in many ways. And so we are confused. When you hear of father, these are the things that do come to mind. Maybe you are also here. You call yourself a father. And I wonder how we've been living our lives in our own homes. Father. You know, the Bible tells us fathers that, or I mean, all of us, but I think today I'm more on the fathers, <laughs> that we are ambassadors of Christ. We are representatives of Christ. So if as fathers, we represent God, who is a father, how are you? Representing God in that marriage as a father. How are you representing God as a father to those children? Even right here in this house or probably in your neighborhood, you are a father figure to many people in the community. How are you representing the father? I will let you know that we all messed up. <laughs> I messed up a lot of time. And I believe you've also messed up. But one good thing about the father is he doesn't care whether you've messed up or you've not messed up. He's always welcoming and show you the way. So today as we start this series, it is our prayer that God will open our eyes. We will actually understand who the father is, understand his love, and then probably outside of these walls, we will amend our ways because he's always welcoming. And if you've been hurt, I pray that through this series, you begin to have a different connection with the Father. Let's close our eyes. Father, we thank you for this morning. We pray that you speak your words to our hearts. Teach us your love. May we understand fatherhood. By your spirit. In Jesus name. Amen. amen. Alright. So now you're welcome. The first thing I would like to talk about. Probably is about Abba Father. You know in the Old Testament. They have many ways to represent God. When he heals them. They call him Jehovah Rapha. When he provides. They give him a name. Jehovah Jireh. 
If it's a shepherd, they have a name for him. There are so many names for God. And I believe some of us also tack on to that. He's omnipotent everywhere, omnipresent. I mean, omnipotent, all-powerful, omnipresent everywhere. He knows everything. We have different names for him in the Old Testament. Hardly will you hear anyone refer to God as a father in the Old Testament. But it's a different ball game in the New Testament. Where once it was mentioned in the book of Psalms 68. Psalm 68 verse 5. It says that he is a father to the fatherless. He is a father. That's one of the places the word father is used for God. And I believe, some, as I mentioned earlier, because of our day-to-day -day experience with our fathers, when we hear that he's a father to the father, we begin to wonder, like, like that father? Like this father? Like what I experience? What is it that you experience with him? So he talks about that, being the father of the fatherless. And I don't know if you are here and if you lost your dad, never met him before. I'm here to present to you your real father. It's not easy to lose a dad or a mom or anything or probably never have them in your life. But there is a father who loves you so much. His name is Abba. Abba. A-B-B-A. Daddy. This week I started experimenting calling God Daddy. You know, most of the time I say, God, oh God, oh God. How about, oh Daddy. That is Abba. Because when you call him Daddy, the relationship is different. Now imagine my daughter walks to me, wants to talk to me. Hey, Mr. Nkanza, <laughs> I have a question for you. How would you feel? What did I do to this daughter? <laughs> or Jennifer, our pastor, goes to Apostle Najim. That's the dad. Hey, Mr. Najim, please sit down. I want to. So he's different. But then when he goes and says, Daddy, ooh. It's a different thing altogether. Now, when Jesus came, we believe he came so that we will be saved. But another thing I believe personally he did was to help you and I see that God is your daddy. He talks about the father's kingdom. He talks about the father's business. He mentioned father, father, father. In the beginning of the scriptures, you read and you begin to think, huh, this is the father of Jesus. Because those of you who are familiar with the writings of Paul, Colossians, Romans, First and Second Thessalonians, First and Second Timothy, Philemon, all these books over there. He starts by saying that peace, joy, hope from the Father. And so you get to know, oh, there is a Father. But Jesus paints a different picture altogether. Once they ask him, how should we pray? And he said, our, it's not just Jesus, you and I. Our father. So it's not about, oh, God. He's the father of God. He's also your father. And you can call him Abba, father. Daddy. Try it this week. If you've not been doing it, it's going to be weird sometimes when you're praying. Instead of, oh, God, say, oh, daddy. It's a different relationship altogether. And that is what I believe God wants between you and I. He wants the relationship to be very deep and intimate. So it's not about, oh, the father of Jesus. No, your father, my father, and his name is Abba, father. And I love Abba, father. When you read scriptures, that is Romans 8, verse 15. The Bible says, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. You have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba. Scripture, you have the spirit of God. I have the spirit of God in me. You call him Abba. I think from today onwards, we are going to change our vocabulary. Yeah? Abba. Daddy. Hey, imagine, you know, <laughs> my little girl. And she wants stuff. Daddy. <laughs> How you doing, Daddy? How was your day, Daddy? Now, as a man or as a human, when you begin to hear some of these things, 
in my language, you say that your head begin to grow bigger. <laughs> you feel so good. And sometimes whatever they ask, you don't even think. You give it to them. I'm not saying we should manipulate God. But God sees you as his child. And he wants that relationship. You wake up in the morning. Good morning, daddy. Oh, how nice and how beautiful that is. Now, this is the father we want to talk about throughout this month. We want to know more about him. What he does. When you read the book of Mark 14, 36, this is Jesus speaking. Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. You read Galatians chapter 6, sorry, chapter 4, verse 6. Scripture says, and because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your heart, crying out, Abba, Father. It's scriptural. It's, not, it's nobody's concussion or nobody's idea that, oh, this is the way you should call God. God wants you and I to call him so. Jesus told you and I, he is our father. If he is our father, let's address him as daddy. Let's deepen the relationship. It's going to change altogether. There are so many characteristics about this father we're talking about today. And I just want to talk about his love. A little bit, a little bit of his love. Not all, I can't capture all. There is a song we usually sing it that his love is so big, you cannot go around it. It's so high, you can't go above it. And it's so deep, you cannot go under it. That is the love of God. It's not like a man's love. Me, I tell you I love you. Run for your life. <laughs> the things you have to do <laughs> to get that love and a lot of us are like that. Oh, I love you. Oh, they have something that is coming. So sometimes like you get to the get to the point. Get to the point. Forget about I love you. Get to the point. Oh, I love you. They want something from you. God doesn't want anything from you. Well, he wants your heart. <laughs> but he loves you with such an unconditional love. But before we touch about the love, we want you to know that he's not just a lover. He can also discipline. And that's one of the things another preacher, I believe apostle, will be touching on. He laughs and he will discipline you. I will not get in there. He laughs and he provides. That is also coming up. And you want to be here. How God provides for you and I. There are a lot of scriptures to support that. He also laughs and he protects. Divine protection for our father. From our father. You know, I love him when he says that when you go through the water, I will be with you. When you go to challenges, I am there with you. Because he's a God of love. Now let me talk a little bit about his love because these things, somebody's going to address them in detail in a more better way than I do. Think about this. Suppose you work at a factory. And you are like me. Any machine they are saying to you, you destroy it. They give you machine A, work on it this week, it breaks down. They move you from there, forget about it. Machine B, boom, I break it down. Machine 3, boom, I break it down. Two weeks after, <laughs> the manager calls me into the office. In my mind, I'm fired. The manager looks at me, Francis. I want you to be the floor manager. Eh? <laughs> I have been breaking the things. I deserve to be sad. That is what you and I do in our day-to-day -day life. But when it comes to our father, the one you are calling daddy, you will mess up over and over and over again. And he still wants to promote you. Why? Because he loves you. The love of God. You have not tasted it. And we will talk about somebody in the Bible and you get to know how much he loves and cares for you and then you know that he loves you. You know about Paul? We talk about Paul a lot. He was a murderer. 
But look at the way the love of God transform and change him. You haven't done anything. Have you murdered? <laughs> what have you done in secret that you think the love of God would not accommodate that? You're a liar. You don't know about the love of God. Now, why do we talk about this love? How do I know that God loves me? I'll give you a scripture that tells you that God himself is love. He is the embodiment of love. Apostle usually will tell you that he does not have love. He is love. I read from the first book of John. John 4, 7 to 8. It says that, dear friends, let us love one another. Somebody will preach on that. For love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God. The last part is where my emphasis is because God is love. Love is God. God is love. And it takes my mind back. Huh? So the very people have once said, I love you. What, 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 what. Maybe I was trying to say, I God you. God is love. So you notice that as we go through our daily lives, we are using God all over, all over, all over again. Husband, look into the face of the wife. A sibling, look into the face of a sibling. I love you for what you have done, for what you continue to do. This is God. And that's why we can tell you boldly this morning that God loves you. And his love is immeasurable. Cannot be compared with anything. Let's look at one character in the Bible. About, which talks about the love of a father. That will come from the book of Luke 15. It's a long story. You've heard it over and over again. But I pray that today God will give us insight into the scripture. Luke 15, 11 to 32, the prodigal son. If you haven't heard about the prodigal son, welcome. You will hear about him today. I want to quickly read through these uh, verses so you have an idea and then we'll take a few things from that. Luke chapter 15, verse 12 to 32. The Bible says, and he said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to the father, father, give me the share of my property that is coming to me. You are not dead yet, but I need it now. I want to take it out. The father is so nice. He divided the properties between them. Not many days later, the young, man, the young son gathered all he had, took a journey into a far country, and he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in the country, and he became to be in need. So he went, hired himself out to one of the citizens of the country, who sent him into the field to feed pigs. He was longing to be fed with the pot that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself and said, how many of my fathers Hired seven, have more than enough bread, but I perish in hunger. I will arise, go to my father. I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. This was what this man was saying. But if you remember what we just read from, uh, was it from Romans 15? We just read a scripture from Romans 15, which talks about the spirit of adoption. The Bible says that we have not been given the spirit into slavery. But this man still have the mentality of slavery. The love of God does not know about slavery. No, we talk about slavery, it's working. A lot of us think you can work out your righteousness. Oh, I need to do this work. I need to do this. I need to be part of this. And the more I do, the more I gain. No. <laughs> the Father's love is not like that. Your works will not... Come, will not bring about the righteousness of God. Your ability does not do that. Slave, you are enslaved. You don't want to be enslaved by anything. God is saying his love is more than enough. So this guy decided to go back. Now these are some of the things I want to point out. That God is a loving father. You know most of the time when you read the scripture your mind goes to that prodigal son but I look at myself and I hope you are also looking at yourself. God created you. He gave you breath. He gave you potential. He gave you assignment on earth. First thing you say, I don't know him. He does not exist. I don't want to follow him. So you go about your activities. Even when you choose to be in church or your parents bring you in here, you have your own mentality. You have your own plan and agenda. 
I don't know. I don't want to follow this God. I want to do what I want. I want to do what pleases me. And he allows you. We come to church every Sunday, but yet from Monday to Saturday, you and I know the things we get involved in. There are some things we get involved in, even when we are confessed, where well, maybe you are not like me. When I'm, God forgive me, I don't want anybody the next person next to me to be here what the things I have committed. We are just like this prodigal son. We are messed up. <laughs> and we go. Nobody is clean here. Oh, maybe you are. God bless your heart. I'm not. But this God, he says he doesn't care. If you pack all your stuff and go, live a reckless life, do whatever you want, insult, gossip, steal, murder. Murdering is not good. Don't do that. (laughs) And then decide to return to him. He will welcome you. The love of a father. Me welcoming you. No. Where are the things you collected from me? (laughs) What did you do with them? Well, you need to do a restitution. You will pay back. I'm going to love you, but you pay. But God is saying, "Uh uh-uh. So maybe you are here this morning. You feel you are so messed up. Even our thoughts are not so clean. But I want you to know that you are loved. And we are loved because we are returning to the father. The prodigal son returned to the father. So this morning, if this is your first time, second time, third time, fifth time, you've been here for years, are you returning to the father? Because he's ready to embrace you and to love you. But one thing as I read through the scripture this week that occurred to me was that this guy did not return to the father because he had repented. Read that scripture well. He returned because of food. Why should I be playing with pigs? I don't know whether you know about pigs. Those who have been into farming before, I know a little bit about pigs. One of the dirty animals. But here in America, you do so good. And probably some developed countries. So you build a beautiful pen, you cement in there, blah, blah, blah. Pigs look so good. But if you leave a pig out here, they will find dirt. They don't like clean places. So this guy came with dirt. Even when he was coming, he wasn't coming, oh, I. Because over there, he thought of food. I need food to eat. And many of us come to God with different mentality. If you come because of food, he will accept you. If you are here because of clothing, he will accept you. If you are here because you want to make it in life, he will accept you anyway. It doesn't matter how you come to him. He loves you just as you are. The love of a father. I am rebellious, you are rebellious. We backslide a lot of times. Oh, I used to know God and I turned my back on him. Will he accept me? Yes, he will. He's been waiting for you. You don't know. He has been waiting for your comeback. And you are here. And he's saying to you, welcome home, sister. Welcome home, brother. That is what I will tell you. But Abba will look at you and say, welcome, my daughter. Welcome, my son. Like, oh, I think that that, uh, that, that person who is preaching is better than, hey, who told you? (laughs) Oh, oh, I I, I think that pastor, that leader, I think this, oh, the way they dress, the way they talk, the way they conduct themselves, oh, they are all spiritual and more righteous. Who told you that? Stop deceiving yourself. No matter the state you are in, God loves you. So for those of us who came in this morning feeling unloved or probably in the course of the week you said something that "Mm, I shouldn't have said that or you prayed for some forgiveness of a particular sin that you are always reminded of welcome to the father the father who loves you even though you came in without probably with that right attitude that right mind to repent he still say oh I still love you come now this whole story if you look at it it started with hmm, two sons. Pay attention. 
One of them stayed with the father. The prodigal one left. You get a picture? When it gets to the end of the story, the prodigal son is with the father. The other one was outside the house. Think about it. Those of us who think we own God. I was in Christianity more than he came. I was a member of this church before you join. We have right. We have ownership. Be careful. Because those who come and feel, lay, and feel dirty, I don't deserve to be called your father. This morning, the love of God is telling you, you deserve to be called a son and a daughter of God. This is the Father's love we are talking about. You are loved. You are so loved. And now because God loves us, because you and I know that we are loved, what manner of men are we supposed to be? In my language, we will tell you that a crab does not begot a cow. A crab cannot give birth to a cow. An eagle can never give birth to a chicken. Neither can a pig give birth to a dog. They all give birth after their own kind. God, Abba Father, your daddy, my father, he is the God of love. So if our father is love, what kind of children do you think God will give birth to? We are children of love. And sometimes the word is on our, oh yeah, I love them. <laughs> we are so quick to say some of these things. But today God would like us to look at a few things when we talk about love, right? You've heard it before. Let's touch on that quickly and then get out of here. Let's get some communion into our body. I can't wait to just take that body into my body today. It will bring a lot of healing. The blood of Jesus in my blood. Ah, yeah. Amen. Get ready for that. In the book of Corinthians, the first book of Corinthians, chapter 13, verse 4 to 8, Paul is now talking about love. And since you and I have just established and believe that God cannot give birth to any other person apart from children of love, this is what he's saying love must do with you and I. Outside of this place, when we are here, oh, we are so holy. We are so santimo. Oh, the way I talk. When you see me on the highway and you overtake me and you cut me. <laughs> so I'm talking about outside, not here. Over here, even when you step on my feet and you want my foot and you want to apologize, I say, it's okay, you can step on it again. <laughs> but out there. <laughs> <laughs> there is this story about this guy um, you know fool the bible says we should not say a fool like somebody is a fool in my language it's called kwasia yeah so this guy was driving right and on the highway somebody cut in front of him he wanted to say fool kwasia but just when he turned his eye he saw, this is a, I'm talking about a church elder. He saw a church member who just cut in front of him. So you go, Qua. Ah. <laughs> Our character outside of church, beloved, God have mercy on us. So if we, call, <laughs> because there are days you will be tempted to say something, quote unquote, and I'm sorry, stupid. But the moment you open your mouth, <laughs> it's like what were you trying to say Francis complete it continue I'm like uh, I'm sorry so this is what God is warning us about that hey when we get out of this place where we shine so bright where everybody think we are okay when we are out there this is what you and I have to do he talks about love he said the first thing is your love that he has put in you must be patient Amen. hey we are not patient though 
well, 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 I'm supposed to do this for you. If you are not there, who cares? Well, I, I'm going to wait for you. Man, this is America. Everything goes fast, fast, fast. Hey, yeah. We are not patient. Love. A child of love. Be patient with your husband. Be patient with your wife. Be patient with your children. Be patient with me. With us as Christians, because we sit here day in and day out, you think I am grown, I am matured, I am still trying to learn the things of God. And so when you see me outside, don't say, oh, he sings on stage, he leads a group, he reads the Bible, he leads prayers, you just what and what you expect. No, be patient with us. That is what God is telling you and I. And he said, love. He said, love is also kind. I experience a lot of kindness from you, and I thank you. And I believe a lot of you also experience a lot of kindness from among ourselves. Be kind. That is love. So if you are telling yourself that you are a child of God, a child of love, God has loved you. Exhibit his love. One more thing I will touch on. It says that's the, one of the difficult things, especially for our ladies. Love, it keeps no record of sin. <laughs> you know, I learned a little bit of mathematics, and in mathematics, we have something called not theory. K N O T. Not theory. It's a very abstract stuff, but when you understand it, it's so beautiful. <laughs> you know, my hair, oh, you can't see my hair, unfortunately. But you know some hair, they are so coiled that it's even difficult to even comb them. It looks like knot. That's what I'm talking about. But then it is believed that if you put the comb in there at a certain angle, you will be able to straighten that. And that has to do even with life, knot. When it comes to our ladies, they have what we call dot theory. Our ladies know how to connect the dot to. Last week you did this. Two years ago you did that. This is that. So that's why you are doing. But I thought we already discussed that and I apologize. Yes, but you did it again. Record of sin. Are you a child of love? Forget about the dot theory. Let the love of God work in you. Men. Men, do you, do you know that this God we're talking about, our daddy, he is love. And you are also born with love. It will surprise you to know that in that marriage, in that community, talking to men, you are the first father figure these female, these children, these neighbors have ever come across. How do you conduct you? How do you show them the father who gave birth to you? Because you may be the first. They never have made their parents, be their fathers before until they married you. And they see the fatherhood in you. So you think you're a husband, but you're also a father. And if your father is born of love, are you showing love in the marriage? Can it be that as men, we can leave the love of a father so our daughters can look at us like, I want to marry somebody like you. Or our sons would declare, mm, in future, when I marry, I'll be like that. Our father. And this is what God is calling us to do. His love in your heart. His love in my heart. We will go out there and show the world that we are children of God. Jesus made a prayer for his disciples. One part, it says that, that they all may be one. Because in that love, when the love is shown, 
the world will know that we belong to Abba, Father. Welcome to the Father's love if you've never experienced it before. Let's bow our heads. If you are here, you've never experienced the love of God before. You want to experience his love, that intimate love. Or you have not actually been a good representative of the love of God. A good ambassador. Today is an opportunity to go before God. Tell him, help. Help me. Help me love others. Help me experience your love. And if you don't know him at all, have not accepted Jesus, this love is also open to you. He's welcoming. He doesn't care if you are dirty. He doesn't care if you think even your sin is unmentionable among men. He knows all the secret sin, yet he says, he loves you. You are loved. You are not dirty. You are loved. You are not unclean. You are loved. God has not deserted you. He's not despising you. He says that if you come, he will welcome you. Just as he welcomed the prodigal son. Pray to him. Ask for help. We all need help. Abba Father, our daddy, here we are before you. We pray that the spirit you have put in us will always remind us to call you daddy. Abba Father, we are praying that this relationship between us, son, father, daughter, father, father will go to the next level in the name of Jesus. Teach us how to love because we want to love. And we thank you this morning for your love, for the unconditional love, for the love that does not discriminate. Blessed be your name, the greatest of all, Dying on the cross. You stayed on the cross because of love. Washing our sins away. We give you praise for what your blood did for us. It's all because of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks again for tuning in. We pray the Lord has used this message to speak to you today. If you'd like to stay connected, please subscribe to our weekly podcasts. We pray God's blessing over you wherever you are and wherever you go.